Thank you very much. That is a wonderful song. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord again. Uh, my name is Anjeri. As you have heard, I am born again. Christ is the Lord of my life. And I thank God for giving me an opportunity to minister this morning. And thank you very much, the youth, because that was very great. Let us appreciate the youth. They have really been amazing on this stage. I also take this opportunity to thank my bishop Reverend and Reverend Emily, who are not in today. And they gave me this chance to stand and praise the name of the Lord through ministration of his word. Wacha to appreciate Wakiwa Mbali. I humbly thank our pastor, who is the pastor of the youth, Pastor Noah. Let us appreciate him. Please stand, Pastor Noah. Please stand. Yes, that is the one who is in charge of the youth. And he has also allowed me to minister to his flock. So I bless the Lord for you, Pastor Noah. And thank you for the good work that you are doing with the young people. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. It is a privilege and honor to stand and speak your word. Your word is as you are. Your word is you, Lord. And Lord, we do not take your word lightly this morning. We really are expectant to hear what you have to say. Not what I have to say, because I have nothing to tell your people. What can I tell them other than what you are able to tell them? Lord, speak, and we are listening. I humble myself before you that I will speak nothing of my own, but that which is from the Spirit of God. May I be used just as a vessel. <laughs> and let your spirit be in charge. For this I pray, believing and trusting in the name above every name, the name that has given us salvation the name of Jesus. I worship you, my King and my Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Praise the Lord again. Uh, today being a youth Sunday, I thank God because youth are precious people in the sight of the Lord. It is in the time of their youth that the Bible says they are strong. The Bible says the glory of the young men is in their strength. And the strength that God has given the youth is so that they may be distinguished in serving the Lord. The reason God has given them that strength is so that they may serve the Lord in excellence, in vibrancy. This morning, we will look at a youth. Who is a youth? A youth is a young person, as we all know. He is transiting from childhood to maturity. So he's in that stage of transition. And let me tell you, every one of us, including me, at, some, at a certain point of my life, I was young as they are. Right now, I'm not that young. But at that stage of my life, there were so many hurdles, so many troubles, so many challenges that are faced by the youth. You may not know them, but these youths, they face various challenges. And that is why the Lord is upholding them this morning to help them transit 
in the right way. And as they transit, they will experience the power of God. They will experience what God can do through a young man that has devoted himself to the service of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Bible has given us various experiences examples of youths who worshipped the Lord in truth and in the spirit and these youths were used tremendously by our father. If you have checked through your scriptures you have seen that God has discriminated on no one. He can use anyone to bring glory to his name. So long as that person has committed himself, has given himself to the ways of the Lord. Because you do not serve the Lord the way you want. You serve the Lord according to the laid down, laid down uh, stipulations of the Lord. There are these various stipulations. There is this kind of a heart that God is looking for. There is this kind of an attitude that is God is looking for. And so long as you will have that heart, I am assuring you, God discriminates on nobody. You think you are an orphan? God used Esther. You think you are born out of wedlock? There was Jephthah in the Bible. And still God manifested his glory through Je Jephthah. Oh, is that the name? Yes. This man who was born and was raised by a single mother. How many youths do we have today that cry to God because they do not have both parents? I'm here to tell you, you who is of a single mother, the Bible identifies with you and with your situation. You who is an orphan, the Bible recognizes you as an orphan. And God will still use you no matter your condition. So long as you will have the right attitude, the right, right kind of a heart that God is looking for. Don't think you are left out by our God. I love the Lord because no one who came to him did he discriminate. Human beings can discriminate, but not our God. I do not see anyone that the Bible did not recognize, no matter who they were. I have not seen. If you have thought that your life was awful before because of your character, Still God recognizes you. There was this woman, by the way. She was still called forth by God to serve his, her, his, uh, I mean, the purpose of God despite his, her past. Despite her past. So the youth, some of them feel like I'm not the kind of a person the Lord can use. That is a lie from the devil. Lord Almighty Father can use anyone, anyone, no matter even where you came from, your background, your past. If today you decide it is me, Lord, and you, you will see the wonders of God. A youth, as I said, is a young person. Now, I want to talk briefly about the pillars of a strong youth. The pillars of a strong Christian youth. I don't want to leave that word out. The pillars of a strong Christian youth. Number one is they are undefined. They are undefined. That is number one pillar. Let us look at what is defilement. It is a state of being polluted. So if you want to be a youth that will please the Lord, you must hold on to these pillars. I trust God I'll be able to speak about them because I have several of them. But I will start with that one. They are unpolluted. Meaning, I mean undefiled. Undefiled, it is a state of being polluted. There is the devil who is looking out for the youth. 
And I want to tell you why the devil is out to look out for the youth. Let us look at the glamorous characteristics of young people. And you will discover this is why the devil wants them. Which are the characteristics of young people? Number one, they are strong, so they can easily serve the purposes of the devil if they choose to. They are strong. Number two, and let us look at the book. Before I go to that book, uh, I want us to just look at the normal things, like they are strong, number two. They are easy to learn. They e learn things very easily. They are easily informed. So if you want to know much about the current world, just talk to youths. They are easily informed because they are able to learn. They have aptitude of learning. Aptitude means they, they have that ability in them. They were born in it, with it. It is in them. They can easily learn. They are strong. I have said they are also well informed. If you want to bring about new things, the best people to experience, uh, to try whether this new thing can be understood, I believe it is the youth. They are able to experiment and they are able to get what you tell them. Those are some of the characteristics that attract the devil so much to the youth, meaning that he can easily give them wrong information and trick them in a way and use them for his own purposes. And he can use their strength to serve him and fulfill his purpose as the devil. And that is why the devil will not look out, will not fail to look out for any youth that has potential to be used by God. They are also very handsome and beautiful, as you have seen them here. None of them <laughs> is with physical defects under, under normal circumstances. They are strong and healthy. So that, those are just some of the few things I believe causes the devil wants to attack them and use them. Our case study will be in the book of Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. That is where we will look at from verse 4. We will go slowly by slowly and we are going to get some things from this text. Please start from verse 3. Then the king ordered Ash Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning. We said aptitude is the ability to learn. They must be informed. They must be quick to understand and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literacy of the Babylonians. So before we proceed, I want to tell you, according to this word, this one who is asking for these young people represents the devil. He is the devil himself. He's asking for this kind of people to fulfill his own purpose, not the purpose of God at all. So let us take him to be the devil. He's not taking anyone. He, is, he has some credentials. And we can see the credentials that he has given out. Okay? Now, it happens that some of the people that were chosen were the chosen generation of God. Just like today, they are the chosen generation. Now, these who were chosen amongst them was Daniel. Now, Daniel, 
fitted this description of the king at the moment. And so he was amongst the people that he, were chosen to be the people that will serve the purpose that was in the mind of the king. In this text, in this uh, understanding that this can represent the devil. Now, Daniel had all that was said, and let's continue to where he says he will not, uh, the king continued to say, he assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Continue. Among these were some from Judah, and we have seen them. Continue verse 7. The chief, gave, uh, the chief official gave them new names. So, like that, let's continue verse 8. And that is where I am. And Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. Let's go back to verse 4. The devil is out to serve us. The devil is out to give you some things that are going to contradict the faith that is in you, the faith that is in line with the word of God. I want to tell you, this delicacy represents worldliness, pleasures of sin. That is what delicacy stands for in this text. The devil want to give you some kind of worldliness that will change you from who you are to the person he wants you to be. That is why he will go out of his way and provide you with this delicacy. Let us be very keen on scriptures. This is the devil. He is saying they be given delicacy. This delicacy is daily. It is daily. This delicacy is not of God as we know. Because if it was of God, they would not have rejected it. So there is delicacy that the devil wants to give you as a young person, as a woman, as a child, so that you may forget who you are. He cannot use you with the faith that you have. Because that faith is of God. And that faith resonates with your God. He has to bring some worldliness. Something that is contrary to that faith. So that you may be changed. I want to tell you that we know that these people were not in their native land at that time. That tells you the devil is able to move you from where you are supposed to be to another place so that he can assimilate you, change you for his own purpose as a young person, as who you are. Being in exile means they were, okay, it can mean you being not where you are supposed to be, where God planted you, where God had you at the beginning. Now you are taken to another place away from the presence of God. You are given delicacies and these delicacies I mean they are wildness and pleasures of sin. Okay, I hope we are together. Now let's continue. They were to be taught a new language. Apart from delicacies, they were to be taught a new language. New language means language that is not of God. Language has to do with hearing and understanding. If we are to commune with you, I have to understand what you are saying and what I am saying. Now, the devil wants to give you another language, different from the language of your master. That language he wants to give you is out of what you consume daily. And I've said what you consume daily could be pleasures of sin. Those pleasures of sin as you consume them daily, 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 they change even your language. You will not start 
Now, the word literacy is there. Literacy to mean you will be taught things that are not of God. If he has managed to hold you, to make you captive, now he has given you his wildness. Now he's changing your language. In his literacy, there is no fear of God. In this language he's introducing, there is nothing like holiness, righteousness. That is not found in the literacy of the devil. You will look for it. It is not there. In the literacy of the devil are other things. As a young person, don't allow the delicacy of the devil. It is fraud. It is, it is, it is what he's using to defile you, to pollute you, so that you will not even have the language of God in you. Why? You will be consuming things that are contrary to the word of God. If this food was good, they would not have rejected it. Now, these people are still there. They are hearing what the king is saying. They will be taught all that. Now they are given new language. The language that will make them not understand or hear the voice of God. Now they will be hearing another language. Different from the language of their king. Different from the language of their master. This is how they, are, they will be polluted in the process. Now... David, Daniel had discernment. I'm sure he was hearing. After this literacy, they are getting even new names. As we know from that scripture. New name means God is, I mean, the devil wants to give you another identity. Different from the one that God had given you. That is why they, they are to be changed, even their original names that they came with from the Israel, their native land. Their native land here represents maybe the presence of God. What God called you is your identity. Why should you allow the devil to change your identity? Why? If God called you who he called you. No one has a right to change that and give you another name. But I want to tell you, the devil will call you by his own names. He will call you a loser, defeated. He will call you so many things, immoral. He will call you all manner of things. But it will be determined by your acceptance or refusal. You have the right to say yes to those names of the devil or to say no. But it will happen according to your choice. It is you who has the right as a young person to say, I will accept this or I will refuse this. You have the power to refuse or to accept the things that the devil brings your way. Don't accept another identity. The Bible that I read calls you his mouthpiece. The Bible that I read calls you his child. The Bible that I read, I read calls you his redeemed. And so many names that the Bible has given us. No one should give you another identity. Refuse another identity. As they continued, they heard all this. Then Daniel was courageous. He stood and he went to this one who was to be the master of us seeing all this is happening. He went and said, as for us, allow us not to be partakers of this delicacy. Allow us not to be of this. Where are the young people who will stand and tell the devil, I am not a part of this one. I am not a part of this wilderness. I am not a part of this thing that you have set before me. It will take courage, determination, 
and it will take the authority of Jesus Christ who is in you, your hope of glory. To stand before the devil and you tell the devil, let me tell you, you have provided all this in social media. You have provided all this around where I am, but I am not a partaker of this. I know who I am. Now, the world has so much to offer to young people. And the, the things that are there today, only God can help the young people stand. When I was young, I said I'm no longer that young. I don't think I heard the word pornography. I don't think so. But today, it is at the click of the button. That is not easy for the young people. When I was young, there was no many false prophets teaching the wrong doctrines. Today, there are so many. When I was young, I mean, so many vices that are there were not, are not there. So, it will take the courage of a young person to say, even if everybody is watching, I will not watch. Even if anyone thinks fornication is not a sin, I will not be a partaker of it. Because these days, it is like a trend to fornicate. But I tell you, the standards of God have not changed. The standards of God remains the same. Whether they are social media or not, if you are not righteous before God, then there is a problem there. The standards of God will not change because we are in the era of social media. Social media will leave us in the presence of God, not take us away from the presence of God. Could it be it is a delicacy today? that you are supposed to say not what it is offering. Be courageous like Daniel. Why? In the kingdom of God, it is about spirituality. We are in the kingdom where we are agreeing with the spirit of God. If you are not agreeing with the spirit of God, Forget about experiencing the presence of God in your life. And it will be a waste of all the things that we do in the name of serving the Lord. Why? We will miss the, him that has called us. We will be doing things without him. It is such a pity if we would do things that bears the name of the Lord, and that, th that Lord is not anywhere near with us because we have chosen not to live a consecrated life. It is a must we be consecrated. Whether we are young, whether we are old, consecration is a must. Anyway, they never defiled themselves. And they were courageous to say no. And what resulted is, in, is the second point of a youth that has a strong pillar of godliness in him. That youth is distinguished. I said they are not defined. Number two, they are distinguished. Now, distinguish, if you are distinguished, it means you are standing above others in character and in reputation. You stand above others in character and reputation. Now, the Bible tells me it is the presence of the Lord that creates a difference in our lives. Now, once you have allowed not to defile yourself, you are sure of being distinguished. A distinguished person, I have said, is above reproach. They are above reproach. Now, we can see that in Daniel chapter 1, verse 20. Once they chose not to do all that, 
first of all, uh, uh, let's go to verse 19. 19. The king talked with them, and he found them not equal to any other. Why? The reason they were not equal to any other, because of the choices they made, the Holy Spirit of God came upon them. Gave them divine wisdom and knowledge, so that when the king was questioning them, he found them that he found people that were matchless to the rest that he had. Do you see what that scripture is telling us? If we will make the good choice of being with the Lord, we will be unmatched. The things, the people in the world will not be like us and we will not be like them. We will be distinguished. We will have spiritual knowledge, spiritual wisdom that causes us to overcome the devil himself. Without this wisdom of God, the devil who is cunning, who was there before you were born, who has tried even your uh, you are, you are parents in the, garden of the, in the garden of Eden and overcame them with his temptations, you might not be able to resist this devil. But once you have the spirit of God in you, I assure you, you will be able to stand strong without any reproach and the presence of God will give you divine wisdom that will cause you to be uh, uh, distinguished. Yes? Eh, praise the Lord. You're so quiet. Praise the Lord. And that is what we are looking for as young people. There are benefits of setting yourself aside. Let you not be deceived. Wildness is not going to help you. Set yourself aside and say no. Have the courage to say no. Then see what the Lord will do. See what the Lord will do. In that class, you will be distinguished in that business, in that home, in that family, and even in this country. Learn from the people that you see around you who have chosen the ways of the Lord. See what the Lord has done in them. And God will be able to do much more than that. With the other, so I say the first one, the first one, they are undefiled, they are distinguished, and the third one, maybe. Uh, I'll speak about it, that is very, very uh, close to my heart, is about the fear of the Lord. Every young person must have this as his pillar, uh, having the fear of the Lord. That is very close to my heart. Let us fear the Lord again. Let us fear the Lord again. And there are benefits of fearing the Lord. Number one scripture that we look at is Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 to 12. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Young people, we need wisdom. You don't know what the devil can do to your life unless the Lord gives you your wis his wisdom to be able to detect, to detect and discern the schemes and the wiles of the enemy. When you allow the fear of God to be your pillar, the wisdom of God will fill you. You will not make a mistake when you are choosing your spouse. You will choose the right one. You will not make a mistake when choosing your career. You will not make a mistake when starting your, your business. Why? You are distinguished already. We have said you are distinguished and now you have the wisdom of God. You will have understanding when other, people's, uh, sorry, when other people are destroying themselves with drugs, with many things, sexual immorality, with all those things. You will be able to apply the wisdom of God even during that time of temptation. The wisdom of God will keep you you will never
never make any blunders if you have the wisdom of God. Let us look at another benefit of having the fear of the Lord. Proverbs uh, 10.27. Proverbs 10.27. The fear of the Lord adds length to life. Young people, if you want to live long, have the fear of God. It will add length to your life. The devil is the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God came that we may have life. And this life is in him. And this life cannot be cut short if you have the fear of God. Let us look at another benefit of the fear of God that I love. Proverbs 22, verse 4 to 9. The benefit of having the fear. Oh, not that one. Z24. It's not that one. Uh -huh. There's a scripture in the book of Proverbs that talks about humility and fear of God bring about wealth and honor and life. That scripture, I know you know it. Uh, it talks about if we have the fear of God, three things we will, will we get. We will have wealth and honor and life. Yes, thank you, Niger. Humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. Now, young people, these are the things we are looking for. <laughs> we are looking for wealth. <laughs> we are looking to be honored. <laughs> we are looking for blessings. But do you know why we will miss it? We have forsaken the fear of the Lord. Please fear the Lord. You know, in that private place, fear the Lord. That place where your pastor Noah is not there, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord even when your parent is not with you in school or in college. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Your parent might not be there in your college, in your class, in wherever you are. But remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Don't forsake this fear of the Lord. Don't fear people. Fear the Lord. I want to tell you, when you fear the Lord, he will honor you. He will respect you. And he will give you these three things because the word of God cannot lie. You will be rich, you will be honored, and you will have, there's a translation that talks of blessings. You will have blessings. I want to go to another pillar, very fast, because I have three minutes. I said I will speak the ones that the Lord will allow me. The third pillar, or oh, the other pillar is, they are not hedonic. Hedonic means they are devoted to pleasure. You cannot be devoted to pleasure. And this pleasure I'm talking about here is sexual perversion. Allow me to speak about it because the young people of today, we, do not, we, do, we no longer remember the scripture that says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We no, we do not, we no longer uphold the value of uh, there's that word. Uh, living, uh, uh, no, there's that word where you are not supposed to engage in matters regarding sex if you are not born again. I mean, if you are not married, sorry. If you are not married. Don't be hedonic. Don't give yourselves to pleasures of sin. Your body was bought at a price. Glorify God with your body. Allow God to rule your emotions. Allow God to give you self-control. Don't be that city. The Bible says a man without self-control is like a city whose walls have been broken down. My friends, if there is a sin that is killing the young people, let us talk to the truth. It is sexual perversion. Ask this question, this profound question that I always love that was asked by one of us, of you who are young. This young person was like you. His name is Joseph. Don't tell me Joseph did not have sexual urges he had. Why? He got married later. Don't tell me that it was not easy for him. No. The Bible says this woman came day after day. 
So it is a persistent, uh, a persistent pull of the enemy. He is so persistent. He wants you to fall into this sin. Don't tell me that it was easy for him. It was not just another woman. It was a woman of a, a wife married to a king. Now, your guess is as good as mine. This wife was beautiful. Which king marries any woman? She was a beautiful lady. I believe so, even though the scripture has not said. I believe she was beautiful. But look at this young man. Despite the fact that his body had its own demands, this man asked this question. How can I do this wicked thing? You can read that in Genesis 39. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against my God? Not against Bishop. Not against Pastor Noah. Not against anyone, but against the Lord. Don't say, how can I do this thing? And my, and, uh, uh, so the, uh, sorry, let me ask it the way I want to ask. You, you should not ask. How, sh why should I do this? How can I do this thing? Or oh, how? How can I do this thing? And my wife finds out. That is still not good. Don't ask, how can I do this thing? And my girlfriend finds out. That is not still a good question. I don't believe it is good. I believe the way he asked is the right question. Every young person should ask themselves before engaging in any sin. How can I do this and sin against my God? If you ask yourself that question, God will help you make the right decision. And you will be a person of integrity that God can count on. If you don't make that choice of resisting sin, you might miss the presence of God, which is very wrong, which is not okay. All of us today, because my time is up, may we ask the Lord to keep us free from pollution in the world, to make us be distinguished men and women, and to give us ability to resist temptations and trials that the devil brings our way day after day. Why? The goal is to please the Lord. All we do, all we do will count before our Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. May we stand and pray. Thank you, Lord, for that word. May it build our faith and may it form the right character and attitude within us. For this I pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much.